Hey guys, SK here, back with another Clash Royale video. It has been quite a while since I've said that, but hope you guys are all doing well. I've been doing really good recently, actually. I have just finished my university orientation, so um, it was really great. I met a lot of amazing people. We played a lot of games. We went to the beach one day, and were there for like most of the day. I got really burnt, and like tanned, and also I kind of got destroyed in the games. I got injured pretty badly in some of them, not gonna lie. But one of my friends said, if it's not, um, if you don't get injured, is it a real orientation? I guess she was kind of right, because, I mean, yeah, it was it was fun. I'm doing a lot better now <laughs> in, anyways. I, like, it's all good. But, uh, yeah, it was really great. And then, uh, like, I think day before, we went out uh, after... Uh, went drinking and it was really nice but uh, I got pretty late and I did some interesting stuff but yeah it was fun it was fun and then yesterday I went to the gym for the first time in a while again I tried to go pretty hard I pushed myself and it was really great but I think my biggest thing right now is consistency I just need to really get back on the grind and I'm excited so yeah stuff is going pretty well um, I, as for CR actually the main one of this video I'm going to be doing part two or episode two of sk's expo guide a new series that i've created here on the channel i actually started on my other channel sk777 there's episode one if you guys would like to check it out um and yeah this in this guide i'm just going to be or in this series rather i'm just going to be doing a bunch of different like uh games like i'll just be showing you some different games uh that i played and analyzing the replays and giving you guys my best advice i can on expo and just how to play it in general because honestly like this is kind of what i envisioned uh for a guide like i've always had an interesting way of thinking about how to make guides right because i mainly do these videos for educational content i ob obviously i love just being myself entertaining whatever but i also like teaching people expo of course and so that's why i wanted to start this guide and uh yeah I've, i i I kind of not sure how to actually just describe how to make a guide like do I do replays do I show placements whatever so I decided you know I'm just gonna make it like as strict or as not strict as possible just show whatever I want to show and just talk and see how it goes and so that was what I did in episode one and episode two is going to be the same thing today today's one's going to be more focused on queen bow because I feel like this is honestly probably my best deck I mean I always play different expo decks right I play through Pinot expo cycle I've played the evil firecracker recently I got my top 500 finish with it but I've gotten many like top three four hundred or top 500 finishes with Queen Bow. My best 107 finishes with Queen Bow as well. I feel like it is honestly just... Sometimes I feel like maybe I was just meant to play Queen Bow. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be focusing on Queen Bow today. So I have a lot of good replays for you guys. I have these two against Lava, Hound, Clone, and then Lumber Loon. Which are, in my opinion, pretty impressive. Because I don't even have a Tesla. I don't even have an Electro Spirit. Meanwhile, he has Evo Barbs and Lava Clone. So yeah, I should be... A uh, pretty good matchup. All I really have is, like, Queen and Fireball to hit air. Uh, so I just want to show you guys how I current controlled it. Then on my other account, I have some other games to show you guys. I have a really good one against Hog EQ, Evo Firecracker, with this Queen Bow deck. So stay tuned. You know, I have a few good videos, or a few good matches to show you guys today. And, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. A bit of a longer intro, but honestly, just because it's been my first video in quite a while. Um, like, just, I've been so busy. I've been out the whole day. Like, I was out over 12 hours each day, I think uni orientation but it was really fun like and yeah shout out to all my friends if any of them are watching this i'm not sure but yeah anyways uh let's get into the first match so we have this one against uh lava clone and right before we start actually it is like season end right now season ends in like two hours i'm really low i'm at 2.4k on this account top 3k and on my you can see people are at like 2.9 3.8 on my friends list uh, on my other account on sk i'm at like 2.2 or something like really low but honestly just because i prioritize orientation stuff like just life and i feel i, I don't regret it but yeah these are going to be games from my final season because i did actually like tilt quite a bit i was at like 2.6 or something then i tilted like minus 300 and i was like okay you know what i have other things to do in life and then i just played a bit and i actually played really well so anyway that's enough talking let's finally get into the matches i'm probably gonna have to timestamp that because that was a really long intro but uh yeah Let's get into this one. So we have the first match against Carleo, and this is going to be Lava Clone. So this has always been an interesting matchup, one that I haven't really figured out how to play against with Queen Bow. This is my first time in a while, so you'll notice how I'm starting. I'm cycling Ice Spirit Log. I'm not cycling my Queen first. It's something I do sometimes, but I don't like it right away. I think I do it now, yeah. 
I do cycle the queen, and he goes for a lava at the back same time. So this is honestly kind of bad. I say good game thinking I lost, genuinely, because, like, okay, I cycled a queen, only have one queen. So I go expo, and my idea here is, okay, honestly, against Lava Hound, if I... It's the same lane matchup with Thrupano, so what my thought process was is, if I'm playing queen bow, if I can make it a same lane matchup as well, but get the king tower involved, that'll help me out, because... I essentially have better defense. Like, I'm playing Expo, I'm on my side. Meanwhile, his Lava Clone push is coming to my side as well, but I'll have a King activated as well to help. So my thought process right now is, you know what, I'm going to overcommit to this and uh, just, like, try and get a perfect uh, tower trade right now. So that we're still going the same lane, but I have the King Tower helping out. Obviously, his King Tower doesn't help anything against Expo. He goes for the Bats, Lumberjack, and the Clone. I want you guys to pause for, like, a second and think about how you would defend this, because, I mean, my Queen's basically already dead. And I only have, like, a fireball, a cannon, knight. Like, this is really tough to defend. But, yeah, once you guys have thought about it, um, I just fireball right away. This is actually a beautiful fireball. I hit so much. That was a great fireball. And then I think I knight right on time. And then I get a really nice ice spirit as well. I'm going to play this one in half speed just because look at that. Like, I hit... I don't even know how much I hit. But considering I don't... Again, considering I don't have an e spirit, I'm really happy with that. Because I actually did defend this without taking as much damage as I dealt. Like, I was surprised, and he even gives a well-played, like, I think that was genuine. Like, <laughs> I actually somehow, that worked out. And honestly, what he should have done is, like, spam the bridge, I guess, when I was so low, but he probably didn't know. Now he goes Baby Dragon, and I'm like, okay, if he goes Lava in front, I'm kind of screwed, but he doesn't. He actually just gives me a free defense. So I go Cannon right here. And the reason for that is because one tip I'll give you guys overall with Queen Bow, this deck that I figured out, because I made a post on my other channel, on my community tab, like, I feel like I've kind of figured something out with this deck um recently like it feels like a new puzzle piece or something but basically just cannon cycle like a lot more often because cannon is a broken card and you only have one queen you want to use it at the perfect time obviously you can cycle it in some matches but in lava and air which is the main point of these replays because i feel like these are hard matchups you have to be saving your queen for the perfect timing so i don't even waste a queen here i go for the cannon and then i think i expo yeah lava again i match it with an expo and right here in my mind i'm already like okay i'm gonna take tower i'm gonna let him take my tower before the sequence even starts i have this in my mind so i'm like okay fireball the flying machine asap i'm gonna take tower Meanwhile, I know I can't defend this. I already know I can't defend the push anyway, so what's the point of trying to defend uh, and, like, not fireballing and saving, right? I'm just going to take tower and let him, like, I'm happy. Let him tower trade because I'm going to get my king. I'm going to go for my queen, you guys will see, in the right lane so that she can support initiative in the right. I go knight here as well. You know, I still try and lightly defend so I don't get three crowned, but I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm going to kite stuff into the middle and then queen over here all the way in a very safe spot so she won't get hit by anything. I'm fine to take a lot of king tower damage right now. Because tower damage is a resource. Pretty common thing. And as I said, I'm pretty fine with this. Like, I actually have a great initiative coming up. I have an expo and I have a queen supporting it. Meanwhile, we're even on elixir. And I, we already tower trade. I feel like this is honestly just a perfect sequence. And he goes baby dragon in the back. Goes for the barbs. And honestly, the barbs are a bit annoying. But I'm trying to kite them out of range right now. So I go for this play. Kiting expo out of expo range. As you guys can see, beautiful play. When you split barbs like that. Any, anything in Expo in general, like this lane over here, is not targeted by the Expo. You guys can see if there's the range, if you see the range on the Expo. So, cut it out of range with Skeletons or Ice Spirit, you'll get a lock. And I got exactly that right now. So, I, I protect this Expo with a lot. I even Fireball right here. as an amazing Fireball. I hit the Bats, the Baby Dragon, the Lumberjack. And he goes for Arrows too, but Expo is still alive. And here I'm like, okay, I didn't know exact Elixir, but I had an idea in my head. And I was like, I think I shouldn't Knight in front, because he'll probably just get a Counter Push. I should probably just Expo again to be honest and i just logged to not take too much damage um I, he actually doesn't have a skarmy here so like usually you want to save log for skarmy in this uh matchup like lava clone but he doesn't have a skarmy so i guess that's interesting he has evil barbs and by the way notice guys he has evil barbs i haven't let him use them even once all game yet even though it's only one cycle anyway right now he goes for the flying machine and i'm like okay he's definitely gonna lava hound because he wants to take my tower there's only 27 seconds left if i can just take his tower and survive for 27 seconds i'll win and that's exactly what i did i expo predicting a lava hound perfect prediction he goes lava in front he says oops and this is so perfect because he can't afford anything to tank i know if he lavas he can't go baby drag he can't go lumberjack or evo barbs even so i just fireball make sure i take tower Maybe not the best fireball, but I, I, I still stand by it, honestly. He's panicking, he goes lumber in front. I evo skellies now, evo skellies get value. 
um, Ice Spirit for the bats. Notice, by the way, guys, everything's going in front. Another beautiful thing about this is that Expo keeps the Lava Hunt at the bridge. So if he wants to defend it with, like, Lumberjack, say he had a balloon, it would go in front. And that's basically how I'm playing it to prevent the Lava Hound from tanking for what he needs to tank for. And so now, you know, honestly, it looks close, but I, I'm telling you guys genuinely, it was not close at all. Like, I w my towers were so healthy that went exactly as I planned. And, I mean, you might say I'm sounding full of myself for that, but, that, like, I'm just really proud of this match. Really good Lava Clone match honestly so that's the first match of the video honestly i'm gonna show you guys the hoggy q one next because i feel like that was the next best one the balloon one is okay but it was really close and not like insane but this hoggy q one i'm very proud of because honestly i've been struggling against hoggy q for a while and there's a trick that i've just been always going around saying oh i don't know how to do the trick like it's the cannon uh, i'll basically show you guys in training mode right now before we get into it um, and this is why I love, like, you know, this format for my expo guide, because I'm just doing whatever I want. Like, I'm not really editing or anything. I could also edit, of course, but yeah, I'm just, like, freestyling it. But, okay, we have cannon skeletons. Perfect. So, say a hog's coming down. This is the maximum range, like, the EQ will hit. So, this is an anti-EQ cannon. He cannot hit the tower and cannon with an earthquake, but a hog will bypass. You have to push it with skeletons around this line, I think. So, he goes hog right now. He goes skeletons here. The hog will get pushed to the cannon, and that's basically the trick. If you guys didn't know, now you know, to quote Sir Tag. Um, that's the cannon trick, anti-EQ cannon. That's all it is, but it's really hard to get in a match because you have to have perfect reaction time placement. But I got it in this match a few times. That's why I'm so proud of this match. So let me show you guys this very close and wonderful match against hog EQ. This is like, you know, top... 7k or something like pretty low but for me it's about the principles and uh yeah so honestly like season end is coming up i'm not proud of my finishes but i kind of accept it as well that i'm um, you know university starting i'm going to be focusing more on real life and i'm fine with that so yeah I, I still mainly do it for content so he goes firecracker the bridge honestly i could have fireballed but i wanted to activate king so i go queen to activate king and i feel like that's fine um, just a free king tower activation is not too bad. And then I just fireball this inferno tower, I think, because queen's ability is going to go off. Knight's going to tank for the queen. Notice this, guys. The knight's tanking for the queen now by utilizing her ability well. Honestly, I could have logged this mighty miner and maybe gotten something because it would have reset, but I think I just expo instead. Yeah, because I thought he was very low in elixir. But I feel like actually a better thing I could have done was maybe just logged and pressure. But anyways, he does get the EQ down, takes the expo out, so he's actually in the lead right now. But honestly, this is a really good position for me. Like, I'm against Hoggy Q. I have an early king activation, which is clutch. Like, honestly, something I noticed against good Hoggy Q players, they don't give the king activation up so early on. The bad ones, they just cycle firecrackers early, they give it up, I guess, and that's so helpful in this matchup. Like, it's actually huge. So one thing I'll tell you guys, in this Hoggy Q, Evo Firecracker, one of the, if not the most broken deck in the entire game right now, I would say, um, has been for a while, like the last few seasons, and I beat it in this match. I would say biggest tip is probably with this deck, just activate King off the Firecracker early, because you need that the whole game. And now I have a King up the whole game, it's going to help me out a lot. I'm debating if I should fireball the Firecracker, but I don't think I need to, because I have a Queen ability up. And I can kind of just ignore it now, and he still has to commit to this Queen. Does go with the Hog, and Cannon will just full defend. This is my, like, autopilot cannon placement reacting to a Hog. If you see me, if you guys watch my videos, you see if I go Tesla against a Hog, I somehow just place it at the very top as well, because, I don't know, it's just my instinct, I guess. I just reset with a Knight at the back, though, and I haven't actually gone for many Expos yet. And so, like, honestly, this is... He goes Evo Firecracker right now, I think. Yeah, and it's so annoying, but um, I just Log plus Queen, and so... He gets a lot of damage here. Honestly, this is Evo Firecracker being broken. Look at this, guys. 3.4k, just Evo Firecracker the bridge. How much does it do? 3.4 down to... Look at those sparks. 2.5. 1k damage. 1,000 damage for playing it at the bridge. 3 elixir, by the way, so this is why it's getting nerfed, of course. But yeah, I'm down 1k just because of that, so honestly, that was bad. Maybe that was a bad night at the back, because I should have anticipated. I wasn't, like, playing my best. You should you should always be counting cycle, in my opinion, against that card. You need to be able to fireball the evil firecracker instantly, or at least, like, predict it. Uh, but anyways, that's... Uh, digression. Now, I have a huge thing, and this is something really big with Queenbow, guys, and I guess this is more of a Queenbow-centric uh, SK Expo Guide episode, um, but uh, I love this opposite lane pressure, because he has to commit a lot to this Knight plus Queen counterpushing. Meanwhile, I can Expo. If he panics and doesn't get anything down, I'll get a lock, and I think that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I actually got him. He, I'm sure he was panicking here, and he, like, because who, like, look at the, look at the position right now, right? I Expo, and he has, uh, okay, I mean the Evo Firecracker, of course. I punish this. this is, I guess this is the punishing that play, but he wastes his mighty. But he has Eye Tower and Cycle. All he had to really do is, 
Honestly, a cycle was bad, but he could have hogged into it. I could have stopped it. He could have uh, Inferno Towered low. He could have Ice Spirited to stall. Probably just hog, though. Honestly, hogging the X would have been a good play. But he panicked, and so I get a lock. And I just protect, of course. Protect with everything, because in these tough matchups, if you get a lock... You have to protect your expo with pretty much everything, so I get a lock back. Here, I didn't really want to overcommit to this hog and defend. This is where the king helps out, by the way, because you can afford to take that damage. And I'm just like, okay, you know what? Fireball cycle. I need damage. I'm behind. I'm just going to fireball, and so I do. And then I think I start going for the cannon trick soon. Um, firecracker, I go queen the back. Queen the back is super good in this matchup, guys, because they can't really do anything about it. Like... They have an EQ, and so honestly, Queen is very helpful in this matchup compared to, like, Archers, because they can't kill the Queen if it's on your side. Like, they can try Earthquake Cycling it, Firecracker, but nothing like a Fireball or Lightning, like a spell like that, you know? And, uh, it's just useful for the three-card cycle as well. Like, Mighty Miner gives them the three-card cycle, you can match it with your own Queen three-card cycle. Very important here. But this is a pain, because this Firecracker is going to get some damage, so I log it. I fireball the mighty, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, I actually go ability there, because I don't think it was worth taking that firecracker chip. So, and he's just cycling massive firecrackers right now. And here's the trick, guys. I got it. I love it so much. Like, I'm actually really happy and proud of myself that I got that, because I've been struggling with it. So I'll show you guys in half time. Cannon here, anticipating the hog. Here's the hog, and here's the skeleton's kite right now. As you guys can see, skeleton's in this placement, pushes the hog. EQ does not hit. And that's just how you do it. So this is going to full defend the hog, thanks to the push. So very nice trick. Very difficult to get down, in my opinion, but it's worth it. And now I can go for a normal cannon, no need to trick. I could have even done a low cannon, honestly. Maybe should have. Maybe that's something I can improve on. Honestly, when I watch my replays, I always look at stuff to improve on as well. So I could have easily low cannoned. If I know we didn't have an EQ in cycle, low cannon would have been a good move. So... Anyways, I'm, we're pretty much even though right now, which is good, like, I've activated King, you know, it's a tough matchup, we're going into late, he has Evo Firecracker, but honestly, it's still good. I think I go for another push right here, because I know he has a Mighty coming down. This is scary, like, if you just cannon normal, and he goes for the, um, Hog behind, you're gonna get screwed over, so I think I had to do the trick here. And I did, of course I did, with the Skeletons again. And this time he goes for the EQ Log, he, he's so mad, honestly, about that cannon, he literally spends 5 Elixir just to kill a cannon, not hitting the tower. You guys can see how powerful this trick can be. And thanks to this Queen right now, getting it, her down, when, when did I get her down? Like... A few, like, 10, 20 seconds before, I get the queen down for the three-card cycle. But this play, as I said, cycling queen in the back, getting her down for three-card cycle, opposite lane where they have damage, sometimes same lane, is so such a good play. It's always about, like, thinking ahead, I guess, in the future. Because right now, he kills the cannon, and I cycle back so fast. I Ice Spirit log, Skeletons are already back to a cannon, because... I just am. And here, I knew he was going to evil Firecracker, so I predict with the Skeletons, but he still gets it down. Look at that. Sparks are flying. That is how that is broken. What is that? 2 one five, four. He goes evil Firecracker the bridge on two Skeletons, and he gets... Let's see. 2 one five, four. That's 500 damage right there. So he's gotten 1.5k damage this game, guys, just from evil Firecracker alone. Anyways, though, I have my Queen counter pushing, um, and I basically Expo right now to pressure, and then just Ice Spirit to full counter this evil Firecracker, I think, or... No, it doesn't full counter, so my bad, actually. Bad Ice Spirit placement. Wow, I took so much there, so that's actually another mistake. Okay, guys, I'm not trying to show you guys mistakes right now, but that was tough anyways. Um, and by the way, I know I'm pausing a lot, but I just want to explain stuff. Because this is what I do in my coaching as well. Uh, but in the final few matches, I'll just show the replays without pausing, because video length sake. But these are the most important games, I'd say. This lo that Lava Clone one, and this Hoggy Q one. Um, so anyways, here... I Ice Spirit, yeah, Bad Ice Spirit should have been farther away, so Evo, like, maybe over here, or maybe actually even, like, low, but, I mean, it's hard in the moment, right? I'm trying to exploit a pressure so he can't support this Evo Firecracker, so, it's much easier to stay in the replay as well, honestly, and I think I get a small lock. Yeah, not bad, I do get a small lock, that's a few hundred damage, anything counts, honestly, and this is a bad position right now, he should definitely win from here, but I actually clutch, I don't even know how, let's see, knight in front, here I go for a, a trick, by the way, if he didn't get this eye tower down, I go cannon here to bait the hog, jump the bridge, if he didn't go eye tower, he would have lost, I would have locked, so I tried to get him right there, I tried to be sneaky, didn't work out, but anyway, he's forced to EQ, and I want you guys to notice this, I'm forcing him to EQ my expo, the lane doesn't want to get tower damage in, meanwhile I'm fireballing the tower I want damage in, and that good fireball gets me like 150 damage, so actually, I'm slowly closing the gap, I think I expo again, um, uh, queen first actually, nice queen actually, getting the 3 card cycle again, and then just expo, and ability, 
I believe I should knight for this. No, I, I just fireball tower. Wow, okay, actually, I really like that play. I know I'm watching myself, but I I played this so well, I'm proud of it. Um, basically, my goal is to expo to bait out EQs and then just fireball tower and get tower damage again. So, you know, really nice stuff. King tower helps out, and I take no hits. Again, I, I cannon now to set up the push. And I'm now, I'm like, okay, you know what? I forced out two uh, EQs on the wrong lane. I've closed the damage gap. You guys take a look. Right here, I went into triple, down 700 because of my plays. 30 seconds in, we're even. And so that's super important. Now, Fireball does more damage than an Earthquake. And I can actually match that. As long as I don't take any Firecracker damage on tower, I will win the Spell Cycle race. And that's exactly what I did, I think. He goes for the Hog. I get the push again, by the way, guys. If the Ken didn't die, this would have been a push. So I got the push three times this game. And honestly, that's why this game was so good, I guess. Um, but yeah, I get it again. Notice this? Like, just... Get the push, already back to a cannon, second cannon comes down, Evo Firecracker the bridge. I'm actually very conscious of not playing anything into range of Evo Firecracker. I even Ice Spirit, because by, by the way guys, if you log an Evo Firecracker on their side, it's going to get one hit. So that was actually a really good Ice Spirit. Um, I Queen not same lane, if it was same lane he might have gotten Evo Firecracker. So I log, and then I just Ice Spirit, and then I Fireball again, I get two Fireballs down. You have to be so fast with your Fireballs guys. I think I get it down very last second. Cannon again for the Hog. Log. Ice Spirit. Honestly, Cannon might not have been needed. I could have gone, like, Skeletons, Log, Ice Spirit. That would have been a four uh, Elixir cycle back to another f uh, Fireball, which is broken. But you guys can see I get it down. Last one second of the game, Fireball hits Tower. If that didn't hit in the last, like, 0.5 seconds, I would have lost. This is less than a Fireball, so I won. Like, honestly, guys, that game was a beautiful game. Honestly, I... I'm just going to play that again um, at full speed this time, so you guys can see. I, I'm, I'm going to two times all of Single Elixir to make it faster, but this was like honestly a very good game by me, and I, I could have obviously done better, but I'm really happy with this because I'm actually making a lot of progress. Like, I was always scared to do the cannon push, but now I feel like I'm getting a lot more consistent at it. Like, I, I remember I was just listening to music, chilling, playing this game, and then I saw Hog. I was like, okay, I'm just going to cannon push, and I just did it every time, so honestly, like, it's just a good feeling, I guess. I feel like this expo is bad, though. Like, could have logged to pressure, so... Single Elixir is also pretty important, guys. Like, you can pressure so hard with a queen in single. I noticed when I watched my gameplay, um, and someone told me as well, I was playing against one of my friend's chair, and he said, uh, like, you can lose to queen in single, like, or you can just choke to a queen because she forces out spells or uncomfortable cards, and honestly, that's true, so, like, I don't like cycling queen so much, but in some matchups, like, you just cycle her, you can pressure with her, and it's very good. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'll go back onto this game now. Okay, I'll go single speed once we're back into overtime, because overtime's where everything happens. Here, just, you know, firecracker nonsense, like, I'm sure you guys have been playing CR this season, right? You you guys know as well as I do the struggle of going against evil firecracker. I even used her myself last season, because she was so broken. Um, but now I'm going back to my roots. Fireball, I'm actually in the lead right now. So I think I need to be more careful against evil firecrackers, I guess, but... Okay, I won't put any of my mistakes anymore. I could go on forever, because this is just my mentality. Like, that's how I get better. I always look at ways to get better. But now I just want to talk about the good things I did, so you guys can, I guess, take note. Like, this is meant to be a guide as well. So let's just go single speed and talk about it. So Fireball the Mighty. Honestly, I like that play, because I'm just spell cycling. It's It does no damage. Mighty has so much HP, but it's still good. And again, I, I won't stop talking about this guy's this cannon trick. is so smooth. Uh, it just looks really nice looking back at it as well. And so, yeah, we got the push. Now he goes for another hog. Knight, cannon. And this time, I could have... Okay, I, 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 like I instinctively said I need to play it lower because it would have been safer. But okay, I promise no more critique of my own gameplay. Like in a bad way. So good cannon. He didn't have an EQ. Now, queen to match the mighty. We both have three card cycle. But his mighty's higher. My queen's lower. So mine's actually going to survive for longer. I'm going to have the three card cycle for longer. And then really beautiful cannon push again. And by the way, this is actually such an important thing I didn't even talk about. The Just the way we play our champions, like, it's something I didn't even notice. I just do it instinctively. But I, I'm actually just, I have the three card cycle for longer. It's so much more important. He has a back now. And this Eva Firecracker is being annoying. But Expo Pressure is good. And uh, honestly, like, I took a lot of damage there. It's tough. I could have played that part better too. But I still pressured really well right now to force out EQ's opposite lane. And so I just knight, heals hog, I try and do the trick, you know, jump hog jump the bridge. Last second as well, he I'm sure 
he wasn't ready for it or like maybe he, actually he was he got the eye tower down but he probably wasn't expecting it like i still got a lock and that's a big thing with expo guys just catching them off guard all the time like last second log last second fireball there's so many things you can do it, you can be so creative with this deck and then just pressure again invisible to keep the three card cycle and queen alive and dps and then just fireball because i actually wasn't trying to get a lock the whole time like I'm fine if I get a lock, but I'm trying to get spell damage also. And now, no point going expo anymore. He actually predicts this expo, and I outplayed him there because I went for pre-cannon predicting the hog instead. Push on the hog, cannon as well, back to new cannon because just cycling fast. Get three card cycle once more. Log, and he's panicking. He's just trying to get tower damage. He's not getting three card cycle down, which he probably should have done. He got it down way too late just now. And I'm just spell cycling so well, to be honest. Like, this last second fireball was crazy. Like, if I didn't hit it, I would have lost. But I hit it, and I won. So I'm really proud of that game, guys, honestly. Like, I, I, I know it might be weird to show it twice, but I had to because I love it. So, yeah, that's my Queenbow versus Hoggy Q matchup guide in a nutshell, I guess. Um, this one. If he has, like, a Bomb Tower or versus Inferno Tower, I feel like it's harder. But still, principles do apply. Next up, I'll show you guys this fast game against Drill. One of the most broken decks in the game as well, and my friend's QWERTY was telling me he's at, he's at 3,800 uh, medals rating points right now, by the way. Insane. That's like top 30 or something. I told him, like, you're crazy, and he said, no, this deck is just boosted. Like, he's playing this deck pretty much, like this uh, Drill, Eva Firecracker native deck. So this guy's playing the same deck as QWERTY, but he's, like, you know, like 1,600 below. <laughs> so he's obviously significantly worse. And uh, I clean the back. It was Firecracker. Honestly, I don't even remember this game that much. I know I just won in three minutes. Um, okay, I like this play a lot, actually, guys. So something that I like to do is if they have a Firecracker down, you can actually go for a building to activate King. Like, I do it with a Tesla as well. So Cannon here, very nice placement because it's not... Number one, it's going to help against the Drill. Number two, the Firecracker is going to target the Cannon before the Tower and activate King. So just what I wanted to get, basically. And... Uh, I also have really good expo initiative right now because I've, I'm actually up elixir and I have a queen counter pushing. So I just expo, um, he gets the bandit down and he gets the last second eye tower but he's down elixir right now and honestly this is a really good position because I forced out the eye tower, I found out more about his deck. I, I'm very low on ladder so I'm obviously not, I don't know any of my opponents that well. I'm, I'm just like guessing what their decks are so this is like my playstyle when I'm in neutral. If you guys play smash you might get that reference but like honestly I'd say this is like the neutral game. Like. Just you don't know what they have, you're trying to figure them out. So I know he has the eye tower now, I know what exactly what he's playing. And I'm still up elixir, I have a king activation. So again, firecracker comes down, I think I queen to match it this time, yeah I do. And really good queen because it also helps against his drill, and he's just bridge spamming honestly, like I don't know what he's doing. Dumping his entire elixir bar at the bridge. But this time I know like, okay you know what, I should probably get a lock right here because he played that way too aggro. So I chill for a while, I don't just expo right away. I let the queen take the firecracker out, then I'm like, okay, firecracker's dead, time to expo, but when I have enough elixir. By the way, queen also. This is another dual lane pressure thing, guys. Just, like, queen opposite to the expo. Like, he f was forced to bandit right now. He's down elixir. Like, I just really like this, honestly. Opposite lane pressure. You can do same as well. Like, if you can be so creative with expo plus queen. But, uh, yeah, queen dies. It's fine. It, it just baited out a bandit, basically. And then skeletons. Honestly, I probably could have won... By eating that bandit damage, and then, like, skeleton to predict the eye tower, because I have a king activation, and then, like, knight in front, be super aggro, but I'm just a, a passive player at heart, I guess, wanted to make sure I defended, but I still do get this nice retarget off, I ice spirit, let me rewind, like, enough, um, I ice spirit enough to the point, or rather, yeah, I ice spirit, like, laid enough to the point where, like, I take a lot of damage on my expo from the eye tower but early enough still to the point where my expo is alive and healthy and he goes to evil firecracker honestly if i pre-log that would have been so nice but i'm not gonna end i'm not gonna pre-log it's so risky so anyways though like it's not about that one lock now the position is one for me essentially i'd say like i go queen again anticipating the drill he has no evil firecracker back like he's done honestly like it's over i switch lanes i go in he has no eye tower he has literally nothing he goes drill i can just ignore it and like this game Honestly, if I don't win from here, like, I'd be upset. Because, like, this is such a good position for me. So I go Queen Ability, I protect the Expo. I think I Expo again in the left as well. Yeah, I should just second Expo to pressure. And yeah, like, as I said, position is over. Like, it, it's over. There's nothing... I give the good game. He's so mad. He starts, like, CRL emoting, even though I literally played in CRL. I doubt he has, but 
and anyway that's besides the point but i just start bming back because you know he wants to start like he should be ready to take it as well so i'm just going to bm the whole game like while my ex was just taking his tower pretty much i guess i mean expo players have a bad rep for bming i like to be a good sport but if they bm first like and he, he's playing the most broken deck in the game by the way or not not most broken but I'd say like top five probably. Huggy Q is probably number one. This one has to be up there, like the Eva Farcracker NATO. And you know what? Just for fun, like no offense to this guy, but okay, he has some CR. Okay, nineteen seventeen. They're not twenty wins. Um, I I literally played in CRL last season. I okay, wrong account. Okay, anyway, okay, I actually didn't play in CRL on this account. So to be fair. I guess he has more serial experience than me. But anyways, yeah, that's a random tangent. That was just a nice win against this deck. And now I want to show you guys... I'll show you guys the final two, but I'll try and speed through them, I guess, because uh, the guide is getting pretty long now. It's already been almost half an hour. So, uh, yeah, this one's going to be RG, how to play RG. I'm actually really good at this matchup. I think I just lost it. I didn't play that one well at all. But when I'm, like, locked in, I play this matchup super well because I, I learned it, like, quite well recently. So... Anyways, also this should be a good matchup, honestly, even with Evo RG, because I have the Queen, I have Evo Skeletons, and he has Rage, not even Log, so... Yeah, anyway, just single Elixir is normal, like, just, you know, what I like to do in single is not really Expo unless he messes up, otherwise I'm just cycling stuff, so Knight for the Ghost, uh, Fireballs on Tower if I can get value, um, stuff like that, you know, he goes Fisherman, I activate my ability, and Queen is still pressuring well, like, honestly, that almost was a hit, I can just Skeletons... Good E-Spirit, honestly, but actually really good log. I didn't take any damage somehow. I thought I was going to take, like, an E-Spirit splash. Again, Knight to match the Ghost. Pretty common, standard stuff here. Queen. And uh, Queen's going to help out against this Phoenix as well. So, yeah, Fireball. We take the Fisherman out. E-Spirit to pr just, again, pressure. And basically, guys, look at this position right now, just to pause for a bit. That was basically, like, a perfect single, because, honestly... Something I'll tell you guys, and I say this a lot, Expo is very often a 5-minute deck. You have to have the mentality that you're going to go to overtime, you're going to go to tiebreaker. You don't win in single. Like, I win in single a lot, but that's not my mentality. Like, my mentality is it's going to be a 5-minute game. And so this, I have no damage on any of my towers. Meanwhile, he's down in both lanes. So just think about that for a bit. Anyway, now he goes Archie the back. He's getting impatient, I guess. I Expo, and I'm trying to get a lock right here. I'm going to put this one on single, because I think, on single speed, because I think this is where I get a nice lock. And this is a very good sequence overall. All. so i fireball the fisher he has nothing number one if he goes ghost it won't tank number two if he goes he doesn't have enough for evil rg he has to like fireball but i think he wants a double rg initiative so let's see how i defend guys because i'm gonna get a huge lock right here but he's about to evil rg he's gonna have two rgs on the board so okay this is a very important thing actually i know i said i won't pause but i just want to talk about these points number one defend the first one without the building because you need to save the building for the second one there's something that my friend heisenberg actually taught me so shout out to heisenberg too like he taught me this with through pono when i was beating rg for my number 65 gt last month um one of my best friends ever honestly i'm so proud of that still but yeah like defending this without the building so just knight plus queen not even queen ability just Queen ability is more important on offense, but now, okay, I have to defend this, like, how am I going to defend? This is scary, this is an RG, a rage, like, you guys will see, I'm not even doing anything on the knight plus queen, I'm just trying to full defend this right here, and then I just, ice spirit, really good ice spirit actually, freezes, that was a beautiful ice spirit, froze everything, this hits the phoenix plus RG, the next one hits, I think, phoenix plus, phoenix egg plus ghost plus RG, like, amazing ice spirit, honestly, like, that was a good one, I think I have to fireball here, yeah, fireball, and then I can't actually skeletons because they will just die to the RG Swift and Knight. Honestly, I came out really good in that. Like, I thought that was going to be a lot more damage in the moment. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm dead. I have to defend this. But I defended super well. And now the game is over because it's still a five-minute game. Don't get me wrong. But I'm, like, I can just spell cycle whenever I want. But I'm just going to play super slow and passive now and just try and play, like, perfectly until I can get a good position to the point where I can spell cycle. So, like, right now... I actually just, I don't even spell cycle, I just chill, I think, um, yeah, he goes ghost, I'm still chilling, I, I know he's gonna keep spamming Evo RG the bridge, I know I can defend if I play well, like you, if you're an expo player, you have to be good at defense, so, I log, I'm just defending very well, queen ability to DPS ASAP, and Evo RG gone, no hits again, he misses the queen, I'm like, okay, you know what, he fireballs, I'll fireball back, you match their fireballs, and now, I, honestly, guys, I don't have the spell value in my head, like, exactly. I just have a general idea. So I'm like, okay, I think that's, like, two fireballs, two logs. Knight, again, always, by the way, guys, anti-fireball cannon placement. So we can't fireball cannon plus tower. Like, this is why cannon is so broken. Only three elixir. It's so broken. But yeah, I give the GG. Like, it's over. Again, just fireball. 
and just one more fireball is all I really need. Ice Spirit to stall, cannon to stall, log, and don't know what he was trying to do with Evil RG this lane. Like, my tower is at 2.9k, so that's not going to do much. I guess props to him for trying the initiative, but yeah, it's over. So that was nice. And I'll show you guys what I, how I lost, actually, because I was actually playing this really well. This is, I guess, like a consecutive RG guide. And then I will end with the Lumberloon. Um, this, honestly, all my videos go longer than I thought they would go. I'm supposed to meet my friends right now, but I just love making videos, honestly. They always go longer. So anyway, let's like just skip quite a while. Like I'm, I'm sure I played Single Elixir well. Um, yeah, I was up, like, honestly, I was up, like, 600 or, like, a, a little bit I was up, so, honestly, perfect single, like, pretty much, but let's, I know I messed up in, like, triple, I think, so, honestly, I think it was just a naked fireball, that was really bad, so I need to learn from that, honestly. Yeah, still doing well, like, playing very patient, passive, fireballing, oh, was that it? Was that what, I think that might have, yeah, that fireball probably lost me the game, honestly, there was no reason to go for this fireball, like, sometimes I just fireball for no reason. And there's no need to because, I mean, look at this. Like, I'm up, right? Like, what what am I doing here? I could have knight the back, log cycle, defensive expo. I know, I know, okay, honestly, if that was a normal RG, I'd be fine. But I should have known he had evil RG in cycle, so bad fireball. This mistake lost me the game, guys, because now he's about to punish super hard. My queen is dead. He's a lumberjack counter pushing with rage. He recognizes it. He's going to go in. And I, I can't stop this, honestly, like, when I'm just down so much elixir. And that was just a really bad fireball. Like, I can get my queen down, you know, I can go ability, try and DPS as fast as possible, but, like, I get a second cannon down as well, honestly. Like, I tried my hardest to defend that, and I honestly defended fine, but, like, the issue is I'm down so much still, it's gonna snowball. Like, honestly, that was a good defense, but only because this next one's about to be bad. Like, yeah, he's just, he's good spam on his end, he's supposed to be spamming right now. I still try my hardest to defend. Honestly, I still defended well enough. Like, wow, I actually defended really well. Like, I didn't take as much damage as I thought, but still, I lost, like, I knew I lost as well, I'm down 600, it's over, I'm not gonna come back from that position, so, you know, I tried, but, yeah, anyway, just, that's, that's it, guys, like, you, I know it's an overused quote, but one mistake equals lose with Expo is a real thing, like, I fireballed once, one bad fireball, I lost the whole game, I snowballed from there, so, and again, there was no need to fireball, like, he doesn't even have a log, he's a barb barrel, so, I can just log cycle, he can't do anything, so... I definitely have, like, a good matchup here, I just played bad. Anyways, though, uh, back to Legendary Pop, and I thought of an idea, <laughs> honestly, this is an SK's Expo Guide, but I might just, like, watch one game on my friend's list just because I feel like it, I don't know. Anyways, though, last game, guys, Balloon, let's go in two times speed, because I need to rush, I'm I really need to, like, my friends are already there, but, okay, times two speed, um, I am speed. Okay, goes for Lumberloon first play. Uh, cannon, like, honestly, good cannon. I think he freezes, but honestly, like, this is good for me, because, like, I'm fine taking that damage. I know this next expo is going to get so much damage, like, maybe even more than he got, so... Honestly, guys, like, if you, when you're playing expo, you should never really panic as well. Like, you just have to always play calm. And now I pressure with the skeletons and just get forced out in NATO. Now I'm in a good position where I can honestly expo again. Oh, I got a text. Uh, I can't check that yet. I'm recording. I got, um... I, I got the position back, though. We're, like, even. And I even Ice Spirit. And I'm just leaking. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to cannon. Because, honestly, guys, this is what I was talking about. I'm not going to pause anymore. I can't pause. There's no time. But, yeah, cannon cycle. I'm going to put my phone down and not touch it so I can't pause. But, yeah, like, cannon cycle is really what it is. And then, uh, I think I just fireball this bowler. And try and get another lock with this queen. If he didn't go bar barrel, that would have been, like, one or two hits. So, honestly, just forcing stuff out. And, like, they we're still dead even. Like, this is a good game. I'd rather... Honestly, with, against, like, a hard matchup, I don't know if this is a hard, I feel like this is a decent matchup, but this, the way you have to play it is so different. Oh, okay. Honestly, I'm picking my phone back up, because this is something you guys should know. This is a great King Tower activation. Um, I'll break it down. So, number one, you get the queen down for the three-card cycle. Again, three-card cycle is the key to everything with this deck. So, three-card cycle down, cannon number one, look at the skeletons. Ice Spirit Log, like I know I just get back to another cannon, and then second cannon down, that is how you activate King off a balloon, and I, beautiful defense took no damage except to freeze I think, and I have an activated King now, so it's really good, um, really good stuff there, take note of that guys, because you're, it's going to be really helpful uh, in your matches, anyway, Log, he's trying to be aggressive with this like bowler NATO, honestly good play, I was scared, that's why I went Expo, um, but I didn't take any bowler damage thankfully. How did I take... How did I mess up, actually? I know I messed up at some point. Decent expo just to pressure. I think I get a lock here. Yeah, last second log. 
catch him off guard. Oh, that was an aggressive log, though, I guess, because maybe now I'm about to take a lot of damage. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, he freezes. Like, that was so much damage. I have to come back now. I think I just... Yeah, I'm like, okay, you know what? Spell cycle time. <laughs> so I just spell cycle. I'll play this final part on single speed, because, like, this is just how you spell cycle, I guess, while you're down and defending, like, the art of spell cycle. I'm really good at it, honestly. I'm... I can always be better, but... Yeah, queen for three-card cycle, as always. Cannon number one, and you guys already know the deal. I'm pretty sure I get a second cannon down. Log, boom, already back to another cannon. Other lane, and then that's what I was talking about. It's the cannon cycle. Plus, evil skeletons right now are forcing stuff out, and now it's just a log fireball. I was just praying this was log fireball damage. If it wasn't, I would have lost, but it was, so GG. Again, just fireball, and that's it. That's, that's it for it, so... Yeah, that's, like, pretty much all there is for today's... SK's Expo Guide Episode 2. Honestly, feels good to say that. Like, I just like making this kind of stuff. Um, and hopefully it was helpful for you guys as well. This is, like, a really long video, but... Like, this is just meant to be solely educational. And, like, I just throw in random jokes sometimes, I guess, but... Okay, let's watch one match. Do I have any Expo players playing? Probably not, because, like, no one is playing Expo these days. Oh, Cordy, it was 38. Damn, he's down to 31. Okay. Um, <laughs> newbie. Please top 1k. Okay, I hope you get top 1k, newbie. Like, see, this this kind of pressure is just what I don't want to deal with right now. I'm just chilling and watching end season. Okay, since I can't find a good expo player, I'm going to try and find one good match very high up, just to, just to watch for fun. Like, I love watching all my friends play. Ian's in a match. I don't. I think it's almost over, though. Yeah, like, and he's probably going to win, right? It's Ian. Yeah, of course he's winning. He's playing Hoggy Q, so that one is over. I'm, I'm just waiting for someone to get into a match. Um, if it doesn't take a while, I'll just watch one and call it, I guess. Riley's playing. Morton's playing. Okay, you know what? Let's just watch Morton. Morton's a really nice guy. Okay, this looks like it just started. Okay, good timing, actually. Okay, Morton's playing minor wall breakers. Let's see here. I want to see um, how it goes. Okay, so Evil Firecracker the bridge. Uh, this is going crazy. Like, Evil Firecracker versus Evil Firecracker. And Hugo survives. That's really bad for Morton right now, but good log and he has to like yeah okay bats and then he's actually holding on well like this is such a fast minor wall breakers deck but morton is really good at minor wall breakers like it's one of his best archetypes i think and he's insane with it of course so last second log yep just to not take the hit as always an activated king guys that's what i was telling you like both players have activated king against firecracker you need it this is like top top ladder so everything you see here is probably a good play to be honest like earthquake cycle Okay, minor skeletons, and Morton just protecting his firecracker right now. Pressure, and actually crazy pressure, to be honest. Those wall breakers might connect. Yeah, one connects. Wow, crazy pressure. Skeletons, bats, will that full defend the hog? Ooh, it did, but the evil firecracker is going to get damage. Okay, and, like, this is such a nice game to watch, honestly. I love watching end season compared to, like, just playing sometimes. I love playing, like, obviously, you know, I've, I've finished very high before, but... I would be lying if I didn't say it's so much uh, less stress when you, you're the one watching and not playing, honestly. Like, I love it so much. Like, right now, you know, I'm not really proud of where I finished, but I already accepted, okay, I'm doing uni orientation and university life is starting, like, it's all good. And so now I can just, like, watch Top Ladder, like, it's so nice. Anyways, though, that's... And now we're getting into triple. It's actually dead even. I have no idea who's gonna win. Like, they're both going same lane. Morton has no spell, which is huge. Hugo can start like, mass EQ cycling, honestly, and Morton can't match that. Plus, Hugo has the Ice Spirit to catch Morton's Miner, so how is Morton gonna do this? Maybe some right lane pressure, but... Okay, still all same lane right now. Log. And that Evo Farker is destroying. I feel like Hugo's gonna take this game, honestly, guys. Um, bats are really good against Earthquake, but, like... Okay, Miner try to catch the Evo Farcracker. Oh, Farcracker the bridge, though? That's gonna get damage. And Morton is back to Evo Farcracker, I think. He hasn't gone for a single bomb tower on defense. He's going bats log every time. Nice log. Is he back to evil firecracker right now? Minor safe spot. Only a few seconds left. Pre-log. Hugo's getting an earthquake down. I think Hugo won. I think. Earthquake. Oh my god, that was close. But yeah, I had a feeling Hugo's gonna win because he just has the advantage of earthquake and Morton doesn't. So, okay, honestly, 
huge tangent guys like and the worst part is i could be here all day i could watch top ladder for hours and i i wouldn't get bored but like it's 3 41 uh p.m so my friends are already at my friend's house i do have to go but yeah that's it for the video guys let's just end by looking at morton's rank because that was a great win or that was a loss but that was still a great game 3805 number 33 so hugo has to be i don't have him added um but he has to be like top 30 after that i think or Okay, actually, let's see as well. Furka number one. By the way, guys, I think this is going to be the first season people break 4K on Path of Legends. Very exciting. Like, See, I kind of wish I was part of this, but at the same time, I'm glad I'm not because Evos are kind of broken. Um, Riley's super high. Noah is Riley as well. Um, Mo, Titan. I love Titan. Very good play. Yeah, he goes 27th, so that was a top 30 match right there, guys. That's how you play, I guess, but... Yeah, let me just open this gold chest. That's going to be for the video, guys. I do have to end the video. Like, I could make this outro go on forever, but I just have to end it. So, that's it for the video. Episode 2 of SK's Expo Guide. If you want to watch episode 1, feel free to check it out on my other channel. I'll probably mainly do these on my second channel, but I'll see how this video does on my main channel performance-wise, and maybe I'll put it on. Like, I'm not sure how well long videos are going to do, so I just want to see. But, yeah, let me know what you guys think about the format as well. Like, there is no set format, right? I just do whatever I want. Like, I analyze my games i pause a lot and i know people say you pause too much i've got that comment before but i honestly don't really care because I, I need to break stuff down and there's not enough time in a five minute replay to talk about everything so that's why i pause um and then i showed like the placements i showed the cannon trick i showed the lumberloon king tower activation so you know queen bow this deck probably one of my favorite decks of all time as well like 3.0 is there Queen Bow's there as well. Tesla buff next season. I'm so happy with about that. I'm going to talk about that soon, by the way, guys, when Night Evo comes out. So I hope you guys are as excited for that as I am. Like, I asked Supercell for it. I I got clowned on this as well. Like, I don't think I had a big part to play at all. I'm just a, I'm a low-tier creator, but I'm still a content creator, like, for Supercell. So I feel like they at least listened to what I had to say, and I'm happy about it. So anyway, Tesla buff coming in. Maybe we can play Queen Bow with Tesla instead of Ken anymore. I'm definitely going to give it a try. So that's it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I will see you in the next one.